हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर पुष्पा कुमारी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन श्यामा प्रसाद मुखर्जी कॉलेज फॉर वुमेन यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी दैट इज 1968 इट इज द वेरी फर्स्ट एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इन इंडिया दिस यूनिट यूनिट सेवन इज कवर्ड अंडर द बी ई एस वन Uh, course of BA program that is contemporary India and education. In this, we have already discussed in the previous video about the important commission, the Education Commission, nineteen sixty four to sixty six, that is also known as the Kothari Commission. We discussed on important recommendations given by the Education Commission, which laid. the path for a national education policy 1968 the learning outcomes of this uh, lecture is to understand the developments of school education from 1964 to 1985 to discuss the need and major recommendations of the national education policy 1968 to study the contribution of national education policy 1968 and its impact on education for all the content is um, first a general introduction about the national policy on education its important objectives its important recommendations the merits and the limitations of nep 1968 will be discussed now the national policy on education 1968 it was based on the recommendations of the education commission of 1964-66 that is popularly named as the kothari commission the commission recommended that the government of india should issue a national policy on education which provides guidance to the state governments and also the local authorities for preparing educational plans and implementing those plans the policy it covers elementary education to higher education in both rural and urban india there was urgent need to solve the problems of excess quality quantity utility and financial outlay accumulated over the years which were massive in proportions so here we can see that the policy the national policy on education 1968 it covers uh, education from elementary level to school level to higher education and in both rural and urban area and it points out on different problems of accessibility quality quantity utility and much more the national policy on education 1968 it called for a radical restructuring and proposed equal opportunities in order to achieve national integration and greater cultural and economic development this means that the nep 1968 focused on restructuring of education system to achieve more of national integration and cultural and economic development the policy had called for a national school system means a national school system a common school system common to the nation which means that all students irrespective of caste creed sex religion origin would have access to education of a comparable quality up to a certain given level the policy gave much attention to science and technology the cultivation of moral values and a closer relation between education and the life of people see we have already discussed in kothari commission recommendations that they emphasized on uh, education of science and technology to make education more uh, um, um, modern 
and to increase the utility of um, uh, the, uh, the education to the cultiva uh, cultivating the moral values and also the education should be related to the life of people means the people can relate the subjects of education to their own life and they can apply the knowledge of their education to their real lives. Now, the important objectives of NEP 1968 to equalize educational opportunities across the country, creating an education system that can provide unrestricted access to education. That means it can provide unrestricted access to education to all people of the country, uh, irrespective of any discrimination on the basis of sex, religion, um, caste or, or anything. Development of values for national integration, need to improve educational facilities for handicapped children, means children with special needs should get education as par to the other children, to increase the facilities for secondary education, to improve the facilities in fields like agriculture, trade, medicine, arts, craft, commerce, home management, correspondence and part-time courses to be developed for higher education means special emphasis was given on online and part-time courses in higher education to promote functional literacy to accelerate the pace of adult literacy emphasize the training of the youth for improved self-employment opportunities and highlighted the need to uplift the conditions of teachers and promoted their academic freedom. So most of the objectives we see here in National Policy in Education 1968 is based on recommendations of the Education Commission, Kothari Commission 1964 to 66. Now recommendations of NPE 1968, first was free and compulsory education. The policy, it emphasized that strenuous efforts should be made for an early fulfillment of article 45 of the constitution seeking to provide free and compulsory education for all children up to the age of 14. Earlier also we see that the earlier commission, the Kothari commission emphasized on providing free and compulsory education for all children at all stages of education for in the age group of 6 to 14 years. So this uh, um, uh, recommendation was also included in our first national policy on education 1968. Status, emoluments and education of teachers. The policy recommended that teachers should get an honorable position in the society. Their emoluments and other service conditions should be adequate and satisfactory considering their qualifications and responsibilities. The academic freedom of teachers to pursue and publish independent studies and researches and to speak and write about significant national and international issues should be protected. So here we can see that special emphasis on uh, improving the status of teachers has been given. A special emphasis was given on giving autonomy to teachers. A special emphasis was also given to do research in their field and to speak and write about those issues. Development of languages. So this is a very important recommendation of NEP 1968. Uh, emphasis was laid on developing regional languages apart from Hindi, Sanskrit and international languages. Uh, we see that in India we have so many regional languages. So a uh, emphasis was laid on developing regional languages apart from Hindi, Sanskrit and other international languages where English was one of the most important international language. It also laid down the three language formula at school stage. The directive was that the state governments should adopt and vigorously implement three language formula that include 
the study of modern Indian language, preferably one of the southern languages apart from Hindi and English in Hindi speaking states means in Hindi speaking states we should include Hindi and English and one more modern Indian language preferably a South Indian language and for non-Hindi speaking states Hindi along with regional language and English should be introduced. So this was majorly the focus of three language formula at school stage. See here we can see that in development of languages special emphasis was given on regional languages, Sanskrit, Hindi, international languages and this gave to three language formula. Equal educational opportunity, regional imbalance in the provision of educational facilities should be corrected and good educational facilities should be provided in rural and other backward areas. Common school system, when we are talking of equal educational opportunity, common school system should be adopted in order to promote social cohesion and national integration. Actually common school system was a system wherein all the children could come to a common school and there um, uh, has been no discrimination on the basis of caste, religion, region, or language or sex. Education of girls should be given due emphasis. Here we can see that when we are talking of equal uh, educational opportunities, girls were lacking very behind. So the special emphasis was given on education of girls, not only on grounds of social justice, but also to accelerate the social transformation. Efforts are needed to develop education among the backward classes and especially among the tribal people. Backward classes, they can be economically, socially backward. So overall, we, we can see that for providing equal opportunity to all, special emphasis was given on girls and on children belonging to backward classes, socially or economically backward classes or disadvantaged classes, especially the tribal people or children with special needs. Education for the physically and mentally handicapped children should be expanded and attempts should be made to develop integrated programs enabling the handicapped children to study in a regular schools. Earlier, the handicapped children were put into special schools uh, but then this policy on education 1968, it recommended on integrating programs that is bringing those children to including those children to mainstream education. So uh, this was a positive effort on part of uh, the national policy to bring those children into the same school as those of the regular children. Identification of talent, the policy directed that in order to cultivate excellence, it is necessary that talent in diverse field should be identified at an early age and every opportunity should be given for its full development. It was proposed that talented children should be identified not only at primary level, they should be identified at secondary level and higher secondary level and they should be given uh, admissions to school directly. Work experience and national service. It was recommended that the school and the community should be brought closer. Suitable programs of mutual service and support. Work experience and national service including participation in meaningful and challenging programs of community service and national reconstruction should accordingly become an integral part of education. Emphasis should be given on self-help character formation and in developing a sense of social commitment in these programs. Science education and research. The policy emphasized that in order to accelerate the growth of national economy, science education and research should be given higher priority. And for that, science and mathematics should be an integral part of general education till the end of the school stage. 
similar recommendation was also proposed by the Kothari Commission to increase the utility or to make the education modern, special emphasis should be given on science education and research. So their recommendation was accepted by NAP 1968 also. Examination reform. The policy laid emphasis on reform in the examination system. It was recommended that the major goals of examination reform should be twofold. First is to improve the reliability and validity of examinations and to make evaluation a continuous process means in traditional system in traditional examination systems uh, we have examination a term and examination of a or a half yearly examination that is mostly based on rote memorization method uh, that is mostly marks oriented but here the national policy they uh, laid emphasis on examination reform they said that the evaluation should be a continuous process it should go it should go out throughout the year it should move out throughout the year and also in different forms it should not be just a paper pen form about the secondary education see educational opportunity at the secondary level is a major instrument for social change and transformation Facilities for secondary education should be extended where the facilities have not reached yet. There is a need of provision and facilities for secondary and vocational education for developing economy and generating real employment opportunities. Such facilities should be diversified to cover a large number of fields such as agriculture, industry, trade, commerce, medicine, public health, home management, art and craft, secretarial training, etc. So here we can see that the policy emphasized on introducing various vocational courses at secondary level and in various different fields like industry, um, agriculture, trade and commerce, medicine, public health, home management, etc. Now a special emphasis was also on part-time education and correspondence courses. The policy recommended that part-time education and correspondence courses should be developed on a large scale and at university stage. Such facilities should also be developed for secondary school students. Education through part-time and correspondence courses should be given the same status as full-time education. And if it would be given the same status as full-time education, more and more people would go for a part-time or correspondence course. About the education structure, the policy recommended a broadly uniform educational structure in all parts of the country. The ultimate objective was to adopt the 10 plus 2 plus 3 pattern, that is 10 years of school education up to completion of secondary stage, the higher secondary stage of 2 years being located in schools and three years of degree courses in the colleges. Ten years of school, secondary school, two years of higher secondary stage and three years of degree course in college. Ten plus two plus three pattern. Now, since now we discussed on the major recommendations of NPE 1968, it emphasized on education and educating people of India because we know that education is a very important tool, a very powerful tool for uh, national development. So many of um, our um, leaders, they have emphasized on restructuring of education system and giving education a very important place and uh, uh, they have felt the need that the nation could progress only if people of India are educated. Uh, when Gandhiji gave his, uh, gave his um, a proposal, a uh, vision of uh, basic education, uh, the Bunyadi Talim, uh, there also he emphasized on educating people on an overall development of the individual 
um, not only the physical and moral uh, development but also relating it uh, to the life of the people, relating education to the life of the people, um, uh, skilling people. Um, so uh, now we are moving on to discussing about the merits of NPE 1968, merits of National Policy on Education 1968. Learning without pressure, uh, this is a very um, like important uh, thing, learning without pressure, uh, studying without pressure. Teachers must strive to make learning a joyful experience and not stick to textbooks as a basis for examination. They should reduce the stress of learner and therefore it suggests significant changes to be made in the pattern of the syllabus. We have to make the learning a joyful experience for the learner. Self-reliance. Learners must be encouraged to develop a sense of self-reliance and individual dignity. This is important for forming social relations. They should also be motivated to develop a sense of unity and promote non-violence across society. So self-reliance is also very important. Child-centered approach, student-centered approach. It encourages the promotion of universal enrollment and retention up to the age of 14 years by teaching with a child-centered approach to learning. And also they, has, they have emphasized on providing free and compulsory education to children up to age of 14 years. Feeling of unity. Teachers must try to instill the feeling of unity, democracy and oneness among learners. That is very important for a country like India where we see so much of diversity. So this is very important that through our curriculum, through our subjects, through educating people, we instill the feeling of unity, democracy and oneness among the learners. Equality to all learners. In the social context, the curriculum published recently ensures that all schools are provided with and follow a standard framework irrespective of sex, religion, creed and caste. Now some of the demerits or the limitations of NEP 1968. Ignorance by parents. See, despite the government's effort to offer free and compulsory education, many people living in remote area or tribal area still ignore sending their children to schools because they felt that education was not much of importance in their life. Lack of coordination. There is a lack of coordination between the local community and the educational institutions, which leads to issues in universalizing elementary education. Means people at local community, they are not aware of the educational facilities uh, available in their community or the importance of education present in their community. Lack of funds. There is an inadequacy of funds which leads to a lack of learning resources and materials. So poverty. Even though education may be free, there are still some expenses parents have to incur and those belonging to a poor social economic class may therefore refrain from, from sending their children to school. So poverty was a very important factor for not sending uh, the children to schools. Lack of resources. Even with the government's provision of learning resources, it continues to be inadequate for quality education. See the quality education which we are talking of in as proposed in national policy we didn't have uh, adequate resources for quality education for such quality education an attitude of indifference there is an air of indifference attitude by the higher authorities which leads to a lack of effort in the universalization of elementary education lack of motivation those who belong to a poor socio-economic background may not consider education to be important. They motivate their children to work instead of becoming educated. 
so for them working earning earning their bread and butter was more important than getting being educated because from for them education was just giving exams getting marks going on to the next class now here are a uh, few questions for practice on new policy on education 1968 so hope this session was useful for you so keep learning and enjoy the video thank you